Hello, I'm Momo, and welcome to a new player's guide to Sky. Before we get to the essential game knowledge, let's first begin with the two things that veterans often wished beginners knew, the butterfly door and darkness trees. We'll start with the butterfly door. In Daylight Prairie, you might come across this room with a peculiar mechanism. It might seem to do nothing at first, but once a total of 8 people have entered the area, the medallions in the structure will activate. Everyone will have to cooperate and light up each of these 8 medallions. If you put your candle away, or if you are too tall, the medallion will spin back to its unlit state and you have to warm it up again. If you are a smaller player, or wearing the chibi mask, because your candle is close enough, the medallion will remain lit all throughout. When every medallion has been fully lit all together, the elevator will activate. Boom! Knowing how this works is especially important for new players who might venture into the room. Without an idea of what to do, it can cause frustration to other players that have been waiting for everyone to simply get the elevator going. Next, Darkness Trees. There are a few of them in Sky. You might one day come across a person who will need your help to burn them, as at least two players are required to remove them completely. Their branches may spread out far and wide, but are always connected in a middle core. To burn a tree, start from the tip of a branch. Then make your way down to the core. Your candle needs to be up consistently to ensure that darkness doesn't return. Dark leaves and orbs regrow whenever there is no light. If you leave them be, spots of darkness will gather and whatever was burnt will pop back again. Finally, if flying and landing is difficult, try hopping instead. On your iPad or phone, tap on the star icon to hop. On Switch, tap the B button. Try to move slowly when hopping from one leaf to another. It can get slippery, so be easy on yourself if you slip off too often. Practice and patience goes a long way! For a more detailed guide, please check out my video on Darkness Trees. We'll now move on to essential game knowledge. Please check the timeline if you like to skip to a particular topic. First off, communication. Tap on the bottom left corner of your screen and a chat bubble will pop up. Tap that to open the chat box. Open up the chat history by tapping on any message. If you're using a switch, you can also press the right arrow button. Chat messages can only be seen when you have unlocked that ability with a friend or if you are sitting in a chat area. Otherwise, a string of dots will replace whatever someone is saying. Chat areas are normally seats with a white candle in the middle, allowing two players to sit and talk for a limited time. They can be found all over the main worlds. There are also accessories that act as portable chat spaces that you can bring along. After putting them down, whoever sits upon them can converse with one another, even if they are absolute strangers. The meditating monastic spirit in the Vault of Knowledge offers the basic chat table. Others can be obtained during certain events from some traveling spirits or bought as consumables from spell shops on every Friday to Sunday. To chat with a friend freely, tap on them to open up your friendship tree. You can unlock the chat ability after the hug emote. When either one of you unlocks with candles and the other accepts, you'll then be able to see each other's messages permanently. If you add a friend through a QR code though, the chat ability will be automatically unlocked. 
click the top right corner to access settings, then click on invite. You can create your own code or scan your friend's invite. By doing so, it'll skip the high five and hug emotes and will save you the candles required otherwise. Next, spirits. There are four different kinds of spirits. The main spirits are the first NPCs in Sky. Their memories build up the main story of each world and are cyan in color. You can permanently access them in your constellation charts at home. There are a total of 37 main spirits in the game. Seasonal spirits are more NPCs that are added on within each new season, usually glowing orange. Their memories tell different stories connected to their seasonal themes. More will be explained under Seasons. Past seasonal spirits will only appear after you have completed the final gate in the game. Their color is purple. However, if a spirit appears as part of a daily quest, you can acquire it even before the final gate. As a new player, you can only obtain their first level of expression until they return as Traveling Spirits. You see them in the middle of the home pond. They appear every alternate week from Thursday to Sunday. When a past seasonal spirit returns as a traveler, you can trade with them for their cosmetics, new furniture, higher tier expressions, and gain a new ascended wing. Just like quest spirits, you do not need to go through the final gate to relieve them. When it comes to flying, you can get over 90 wings from the glowing tingling children you meet across the six worlds, and an additional 11 when you enter this portal and get through its challenges. More wings tend to be added upon the release of each new season. Another way to get even more wings is to unlock each spirit's ascended wings, including the traveling spirits. However, you won't get their wings immediately. They will only give it to you after you've passed through everything beyond this mysterious door. If you already know what's in there and need some help, I have two videos that can guide you through them extensively. Now, there are two different ways to fly in sky. When you lift yourself off the ground, you start with flapping. Switch to gliding to fly ahead faster. The icon to trigger between the two flight modes shows up whenever you're up in the air, at the bottom right of any device. For switch, press R to toggle. While that's the basic gist for flying, I do have a video that explains more. However, since it was created before the game's release on Switch, some tips that require the touchscreen may not work on it in the meantime. But please ignore this statement if the touch screen controls are finally updated. In Sky, invisible walls are everywhere. As a new player, curious and explorative, you might try to venture into places that only knock you back or prevent you from going any further. Losing control and flopping about crazily is common. That's just us bumping into a wind wall. Imagine an invisible wall of wind that bounces you off whenever you try to force yourself into it. If you keep trying to get into an error but get knocked away instead, you don't have to go there. So don't worry about missing out on any wing or spirit. There is none beyond the wind walls. In this game, there are four different types of currency. Access them by tapping on the top left corner of the screen. On Switch, the L button shows them. Hearts are used to trade for a variety of things and can be obtained through a few ways. There are two spots in the game where you can sit and a notification will pop up. After leaving your review, you receive a heart. You can trade three candles to gift a friend a heart. Likewise, a friend can gift you a heart the same way. This can be done once a day per friend. You can also trade hearts at the friend's menu. 
Receiving daily light from friends will accumulate points towards a heart. When you accumulate 60 daily lights, your heart icon will start bobbing at the top left of your screen. Tap on it to receive a heart. Another method is leaving messages by the shrines out in the world. You can also leave a message at any body of water by putting out a message boat. You can buy them once a day at the spell shop. Quest shrines only appear during a daily quest that requires you to meditate at a specific location. It always has a swirly monument accompanied by a white circle where you can sit and read a question. So, how do we get a heart from messages? First, leave a message. It is possible to get one heart every two days by leaving a message on a paper boat or by a regular message shrine. Quest shrines are separate from them and will also give you a heart individually. Second, get three friends to like your message. Your message can only be seen by your friends until you get three likes from any of them. After those three likes, it will then be viewable to the public. This applies to all shrines and boats. Thirdly, get 50 likes from everyone. To finally get that one heart, you need at least a total of 50 likes from anyone. Any message you leave by the boat or shrine will last for 48 hours, so you have that much time to gain your likes. However, whatever message left at the quest shrine disappears by the next reset, so you only need at least 10 likes to gain your heart. When you know you have received enough likes, you see a heart waiting for you at home on the statue by the return shrine. Finally, quest lines. From the season of enchantment onwards, each season brought us a quest spirit that offers us a quest line we can complete to get hearts and items. Each spirit resides in their respective seasonal maps. The pale candles are our main currency and are easily obtained throughout sky by lighting the red candles, some white ones, and burning darkness. These candles have a chevron system. The game resets every day at midnight pacific time. Upon every start of a new day, our main candles resets its chevron system too. When you first start collecting candles on a new day, the light that you obtain are big blobs of flames that fill up your chevron meter. The more flames you get, the smaller they become, and you'll also notice the chevron going down from 3 arrows to none. One main candle is basically a few big blobs of light or a multitude of small flames. By the time your chevron is completely gone, you will have about 15 main candles. Non-seasonal quest candles will give you an extra 4. Ascended candles are used to unlock higher tiers, the warp friendship ability, or trade for certain spells. They are obtained in a unique way accessible via the final gate. Only a set amount of 15 full Ascend Up candles, plus a few pieces of Ascend Up flame, can be collected once every week. More information has already been covered in my Eden's Guide for Newbies. Seasonal candles, hearts, and the season pass are usually orange and only appear during seasons. Seasons are basically like DLCs that Sky releases one after another, with usually a few weeks of breaks in between. Each season normally brings us new areas, a quest line, spirits, and their respective items and expressions. A seasonal constellation also appears in the middle. While a season is running, daily quests reward us with seasonal candles. You can also find at least 4 stacks of seasonal candles out in the open in the daily quest world. Collect all 4 stacks and they will create one extra seasonal candle. 
The Quest Spirit also has a season and menu that you can slowly unlock over time. The left side is a permanent quest line that you can follow even after the season has ended, whereas the right side are items that we call ultimate rewards. At every end of a seasonal spirits tree is a heart that you can trade with seasonal candles. Use them to unlock the ultimate rewards. They can be obtained only during the season and will be gone after it ends. In order to obtain everything a season has to offer, tap the top right corner to access the shop. You can pre-order. No wait, you can't anymore. The new update says you can't pre-order. Oh boy. Anyway, we have to pay real money to buy the season pass or be gifted one from a kind friend. If you have acquired it, you can receive a bonus candle every day by the return shine. If you choose not to purchase the season pass, you can always wait for spirits to return again in the future as traveling spirits. The items you missed out on can be obtained with normal candles and hearts that way. However, at the moment, ultimate gifts do not return. Occasionally, the game has events that last for a short while. They usually occur during seasonal changes and well-known celebrations. During minor events like the Days of Summer Lights, the home space is slightly altered. Major events like Halloween may bring a little more. The office could have a change of environment and even welcome us with a special spooky man. Often so, a spirit would trade items with hearts or candles. And cosmetics are available to buy in the in-app purchase shop. Let's not forget the freebies! Finally, in-game player terms. Being a game of few words, the community has created terms to describe and label many different things in Sky. For example, a moth is a new player. According to Skybot, a moth is a new player. They have brown wings, they flap around uncontrollably, and they are drawn to flame. Next is a Krill, which is the Dark Dragon, that I guess got demoted from being a fearsome skilled beast into an oversized dragon or crustacean. Darkness plants and trees are the black and blue things that we can burn to gather light. Winged light is the term of the golden children that gives you the power to your flight. A wing buff is also what they call an ascended wing. Candle wax is what some people call the lights you collect to create the currency candles, since it visually looks like wax being built up to form a candle. Candle cakes, or more officially known as treasure candles, are the big rate stacks of candles. A candle run is the name of the activity when a person goes through portal to portal to collect candle lights and complete the daily quests. An Eden run is when a person goes to Eden to collect ascended candles. Lastly, to taxi or Uber is to lead a group of people for either a candle run or an Eden run. The taxi is the one doing all the flying and collecting lights for everybody. If you are a veteran and have more info to share, feel free to leave a comment for our little new ones to know! We now finally come to the last section of the video, other useful information. We'll start with instance merging. While out adventuring, either solo or with a few friends, there might have been times when unlit candles suddenly burst into flames. Darknesses pop into balls of light, and strangers poof into existence right before you. 
Whenever that happens, you've successfully merged into another instance. Since there is no official explanation for this, I'll do my best to explain. In gaming terms, an instance is an area that generates a new copy of the location for each group or for a certain number of players that enters the area. Basically, a map has several copies of itself. Each copy is called an instance. Since only a maximum of 8 people can occupy one instance at a time, once it is full, no one else can enter. That is why sometimes you might try to join a friend in a normal map but cannot enter. Their instance is full. But what about instances where there are only one or two players each? To save the server's space, instances are merged. So, the chance of joining an instance where things have already been burnt or lit up is higher as a solo player. Also, whenever you return home and immediately use the return shrine again, it is likely that you re-enter the same instance. If you enter a portal, head back, and immediately re-enter the same portal, you're also likely to be back in the same instance. As long as you immediately return to the same area, the instance is unlikely to change. If you like to enter a different instance, simply wait around for a bit before returning. Next, extra lights. Hidden away in areas of the beaten path are lights that you might easily miss as a new player. In the Owl of Dawn, there is an entrance hidden under a sand dune to the left. Go through the tunnel and you'll find a candle kick at the very end of its route. If you find the Cave of Prophecy, there is a hole in its ceiling where you can fly up to find a small stack of candles too. In Daylight Prairie, head downwards at either side of the temple and walk towards the back. You come across a smiley face. It is pretty dark there, so a tip on getting back out is to face the wall opposite of the candles and hug it until you find the exit. In Hidden Forest, while not exactly hard to find, I often forget about the row of candles atop one of these trees. Below that, midway through the tunnels where a seasonal spirit sits, is a candle cake. In the Valley of Triumph, a candle cake is somehow able to stay lit underwater under the ice ring. There is also another candle cake at the end of the cave. Lastly, in the Vault of Knowledge, a secret hole in the wall leads to a few secret candles and the secret area. Sky also now has social areas where you can sit around and wait as lights will slowly appear and approach you as long as you are within range. Snoozing symbols appear after 2 minutes of inactivity, but lights will still be collected in the meantime. After 10 minutes of inactivity though, your Sky Kid will lay down to sleep and stop collecting them. To start collecting the lights again, simply do something in-game to become active once more. Please also note that they will stop appearing after reaching their daily limit. The areas are as follows. In Daylight Prairie, go into the cave and fly up to the right side area just by the entrance. Go all the way straight in and you'll come across a campfire. Head down to the Village of Dreams through the Valley of Triumph and fly up to a mountain peak at the back of the skating ring. 
Over there, you will find the hot springs area. Finally, tucked in a corner in the graveyard at Golden Wastelands is another campsite with a past seasonal spirit and some friends both roasted and alive. Lastly, there are two more timed locations for extra lights. In Daylight Prairie, at the Sanctuary's Gazer, there is a special event that occurs every alternative hour from the time of reset. During that period, the gazer will huff and puff for 5 minutes before spikes of darkness start to pop out. These extra lights will keep coming out for the next 10 minutes. Find out what time sky resets daily in your area. If it resets at 3pm every day, then the gazer will activate every other hour from 3pm at 5pm, 7pm, 9pm, so on and so forth. The gazer will appear at either every odd hour or at every even hour. 15 minutes after the Gazer event ends, another light field event will begin at Hidden Forest's pond clearing in the hollow of a tree. Similarly, it starts with a preparation phase of 5 minutes before dinner is served for the next 10 minutes. At home, there's usually a boat parked by the shore where you can trade for spells. In the case the boat is not there, you can get spells at the Forgotten Ark in Golden Wastelands instead. Take the boat at the easternmost end of the first map in Wastelands to get there. Once you arrive, you have to finish the questline first to fully restore the Ark. At every weekend, from Friday to Sunday, more spells will appear. Occasionally, freebies will show up at the boats, usually during events. Remember to check the boats every now and then to ensure you have acquired all the freebies. As a new player, you might come across people seemingly disappearing to the walls. Or rocket up out of the blue. Glitching is probably an unintended gameplay in Sky, but has become, for some veterans at least, something that is naturally done every day as part of the game. There are a few ways to go beyond the walls. Over the ceiling, and under the floors. But unfortunately, this video will not teach you how to do it. I'm just here to inform you that this method exists. However, I might make a guide on it in the near future. The main use of glitching is to go out of bounds or OOB. While I normally glitch to do my candle runs as quickly as possible, the term out of bounds usually refers to purposely getting out of the boundary map to visit outside structures because it can be really, really amazingly beautiful. While not so much a secret anymore to experienced players, these few things were once interesting and mysterious, up until you experience it. In Daylight Prairie, through the butterfly door and up on a hill is a spot where seven people need to gather together and practice patience. What's gonna happen? In the Vault of Knowledge, look to the left when you first enter and go up to the back of the wall. There is a hidden entrance there. Going through it will lead you to the secret area blocked by the blue barrier. You can only enter through it during special events when an NPC invites you in or if you have the blue founder's cape. Otherwise, you have to find someone who has that cape to pull you through. In Golden Wastelands, hidden next to the starting map's dressing area is a pipe with the Nintendo Switch icons. Players who have purchased the Switch pack only available on Sky and Switch will be able to enter. Finally, what's the point of this game? After going through the six worlds, experiencing trauma in Eden for most of us, and popping back out like a daisy, 
Is there anything more to the game? Well, maybe not. Sky isn't exactly a progressive game, so to many of you, you might end your journey there and then. However, to some veterans, Sky could be a game where they can find comfort in a routine of collecting candles or dressing up. It could also be the social factor of meeting new friends or interacting with others non-verbally. If you have been playing Sky for a while now, what keeps you playing? We've now come to the end. As Sky has a lot to offer, there might still be other things that I've missed out. Hopefully, you'll be able to learn those on your own as you continue to play more. Thanks for watching! And as always, take care, keep safe, and stay peachy!